Welcome to Chemistry with Caroline. In this video, we're going to look at how many signals we can expect in a proton NMR given a certain molecule. So the proton NMR gives us a lot of information, and I've broken this down into videos about each specific bit of information, and then I'll also have videos about how to integrate all of those things to solve a more complex problem. So the first thing is, how many signals will I see? You will see as many signals as there are unique protons in your sample, in your molecule. So let's draw a molecule here. And I'm going to draw all of my hydrogens on. So we're talking about proton NMR here. So the only signals we'll see will be because of the presence of protons. And generally speaking, those protons will be attached to carbon atom. Although you will occasionally see signals for protons that are on an oxygen or a nitrogen atom. So our job is to figure out which of the protons on the molecule I've drawn are the same and which ones are different. So let's go to the next slide and we'll take a closer look. All right, so here's the molecule from the previous slide. In this instance, we have carbons that have hydrogens on them and all of those carbons are sp3 hybridized and they have free rotation because they have sigma bonds. And so any CH3 group is going to have identical protons on it because those protons can freely rotate all the way around. So if we think about any of these sigma bonds, they're rotating freely at room temperature. So when we label our protons, all of these protons here would be HA because they're all in the exact same chemical environment. They're not stuck in one position because of that free rotation. Now as I go to the left across the molecule, now I encounter a CH2. That CH2 is going to have different protons than the ones on the methyl group because those protons are right next door to an oxygen, whereas the ones on the methyl group are one away. They're in different chemical environments. And so these would be HB and HB. There are some instances when a CH2 group would have different protons. Those would be in a different environment. Um, but those are rare that it shows up in the NMR as different signals. And I'll treat that in a separate video on complex splitting. So now if we go to this end of the molecule here, we have another CH3 group. However, this molecule is not symmetrical, and the CH3 group on the left-hand side is attached to a carbonyl carbon, whereas the CH3 group on the right-hand side is attached to a CH2 group. Those are not the same chemical environment, so these would be HCs. So this molecule has three unique types of protons on it in different chemical environments. And so when we label A, B, C, and you could do one, two, three, it doesn't matter, you're just differentiating them from one another. We get three unique types of protons. So we would expect to have three unique signals in the proton NMR for this molecule. Now here is another molecule, and in this molecule I do have an element of symmetry. So these CH3 groups here are both coming off of the same carbon. They're coming off of this carbon atom. And again, there's free rotation about that bond. So this CH3 group on the top here, it's not stuck next to the carbonyl compound. It freely rotates such that it's experiencing a chemical environment that's identical to the other CH3 group. So one way that you can have symmetry is to have the same group coming off the same atom as long as there's free rotation about the bond that it is attached to. So when we label these, these H's on these terminal CH3s are going to be in the exact same chemical environment. And so all of these are going to be HAs. Now if we keep going over, we're going to go to the right on the molecule. Next we encounter an carbon with just one H on it, that would be HB, right? It is not another CH3 coming off that same carbon, so it's not identical to the methyl groups that have the HAs on them. If I keep going over, I get to a CH2 that is adjacent to a carbonyl compound, yet another chemical environment. And then I go to the other side and I have a CH3. Now that CH3 is terminal, so it's next to a carbonyl, but on the other side there's nothing, it's the end. Whereas this CH2 here has an isopropyl group next door to it. So HC is going to be different than this methyl group, HD. Again, those have free rotation, so they're all going to be 
um, identical to one another on that methyl group. So this particular molecule has four unique environments, and so we would expect to see four signals in our proton NMR. So here's another example, and in this case, we have a bond that does not have free rotation around it. So we have a double bond in this molecule. The pi bond, if it rotates, it breaks the pi bond. So at room temperature, a pi bond is fixed. You'd have to put extra energy into that system to get it to rotate. And that means that the two terminal protons on the right-hand side are not equivalent to one another. So this would be HA and this would be HB. It doesn't matter which one I call which, just that they are different from one another. HA is cis to the methyl group, right? They're on the same side and they're stuck that way because there's no free rotation. Whereas HB is across from the methyl group. It's trans to the methyl group um, and it's stuck that way again because there's no free rotation. So in this case, even though the protons are on the same carbon, they have different chemical environments because of the lack of free rotation. So that's HA and HB. Now we have a proton on a different carbon, that's HC. And then again, we have a methyl. And so um, it's attached to a double bond, but this bond itself is a sigma bond here. And so that has free rotation. So those HDs are moving around such that they're all experiencing the same chemical environment as one another. So here I have A, B, C, and D. So again, I would have four signals. In this last example, let's look at symmetry as it presents itself another way, which is when there's like a mirror plane through a molecule. So this catches students off guard sometimes. Um, this methyl group that is coming off of my oxygen, that's called a methoxy group altogether as a substituent. As I've drawn it right now, it's on the right-hand side of the molecule. However, this bond, again, is a sigma bond. It has free rotation. So that methyl group is sort of swinging all the way around all the time at room temperature. And so those H's are all going to be um, the same as one another. And that molecule, because of the kind of average of the environments, it has a line of symmetry right down the middle of it. So I'm going to change to red here. So right straight down the middle, there's a line of symmetry such that the H's that are on opposite sides are symmetrical with one another. They're in the same chemical environment. So if I were to label my H's, these on the methyl would all be HA. And then if I go down onto the ring here, this would be HB and this would also be HB. It's like if I could fold the benzene ring in half like a sandwich. So towards the middle, towards that red line, those HBs are both right next door to the methoxy group and one away from the methyl group. So their chemical environment is identical. Now, next you have HCs, which would be again on that mirror plane on the ring. And that's because the HCs are both next door to a methyl group and one away from the methoxy group. So their chemical environment is the same. And then you've got HDs here at the bottom. It's a methyl group, but it's coming off of the benzene ring directly, not off of an oxygen on the benzene ring. So those are going to be different from one another. So I would expect four signals only because of the symmetry in this molecule. So those are some examples of how you can determine the number of signals in your proton NMR by labeling all of the unique types of protons on your molecule. I have a bunch more videos on proton NMR, so check them out if you need some more help. Spectroscopy is awesome, it's so fun, but it's definitely a puzzle and takes some practice. If you found this video helpful, please like, subscribe, and share with your friends, and I'll see you next time. Thanks!